Hey guys, so last week we did the whole sleeper simulant versus G-horn scenario testing both of those weapons out for what dealt more damage and stuff like that. Today I want to do a little theory crafting on the new sword, the Young Wolf's Howl, and not only that, talk about the other three exotic swords since I've never really went too in depth with them. So the Young Wolf's Howl is a sword, and it operates in a somewhat similar fashion as the other swords do. You have your basic swings, and then you have your R2 heavy attack. All of the other swords do pretty high damage with this R2 attack. Young Wolf's Howl does not exactly do that. Instead, you will slam down dealing moderate damage, but the main component is that you leave a damage over time effect on your target, which causes them to take 15% more damage over a short time, about 3 seconds or so. The big downside is that this attack uses 10 ammo, but if you have less than 10 ammo, the attack will still go off. A big comparison people are making is the Young Wolf's Hell versus something like Ray's Lighter, mainly because they're both solar swords. If we were to compare these two weapons, the results are not even remotely close. Ray's Lighter does way more damage than the Young Wolf's Hell for single target damage. I do not even need to show you guys any statistics, but I will. Dark Drinker also does way more damage. Not to mention those heavy attacks only cost 5 to the Young Wolf Hal's 10. So, not a great start. But we're not factoring in the utility aspect of the weapon. 15% bonus damage every time you slam for 3 seconds. If you pace your swings, that's about 18 to 21 seconds of bonus damage. Okay, so what can we do with that? The hardest content is the raid, so where could we even utilize this in the raid? Well, you can't really use it on Vosik, it's not, it's not practical. Siege Engine, yeah, doesn't really have a place there. So the only place we can really use it is on Axis Phase 2. So if we just look at Ray's Lighter versus Young Wolf's Hell, it's not even a fair comparison to make, like I just said. A better comparison would be Ray's Lighter versus Sleeper Simulant, or even versus Dark Drinker, but we'll save that for a little bit later. What we can do is use a previous test of mine with Sleeper Simulant and use that to simulate what the effects of Young Wolf's Howl would be under that simulation. In the Sleeper Simulant vs. G-Horn video, I fired 9 shots with Sleeper with Weapons of Light at Axis during the third teleport, dealing 374,328 damage in those 9 shots. So let's say that all five of my other teammates were also doing that. Nine sleeper shots, all crits. That damage number, multiplied by six, is 2,245,968 damage. Now take away the person using the sword and take away their damage. Now it's 1,871,640 damage. Now add in the 15% bonus damage from the sword for everyone's shots, and we'll say the debuff lasts the entire time for simplicity's sake. We're up to 2,152,386 damage, but we aren't including the damage from the 6 or 7 swings of the sword itself, which conveniently enough, would approximately cover the missing 93,582 damage. In a test I did without Weapons of Light, 6 slams from Young Wolf's Hal did 100,000 damage, so with Weapons of Light, it would be about 135,000, which means we're up about 40,000 damage. Axis has about 11 million health, so that 40,000 damage is 0.36% of his total health. So, in this simulation, using 5 Sleeper Simulants and 1 Wolf Howl at around 380, assuming you keep up the damage debuff on Axis during the final damage teleport phase thing, you would just barely be doing more damage if you're perfect, compared to just everyone using 6 Sleepers. Scaling up the damage of the sleepers would mean we would also scale up the damage of the sword as well, essentially breaking even over a wide array of light levels well past light level 400. What that means is essentially using the sword will at best let you do a little bit more damage, but at worst could actually cost you damage if you aren't applying the debuff properly in that specific sim. Meaning it's a wash and you're fine with whichever weapon you want to use, with that specific sim. However, the lower your team's damage is, let's say for some reason you're all using something like Chaos Dogma, which will be covered in another video, that means you're doing less damage, which means the 15% bonus is going to be more effective for your team. 
So you could say that the worse your team's damage is, the better the debuff gets. But the better your team's damage is, the worse it gets. However, the trend line of that does not have a very impactful slope. Meaning that pretty much regardless of whatever weapons you're using in the raid, the Young Wolf's Howl will not play any sort of greatly significant impact on your team's total damage. During stuff like Heroic Strikes and Nightfalls, the same kind of math applies. The amount of bonus damage you will provide using Young Wolf's Howl will be offset by the damage you will not be dealing. However, since you don't have as many people in those activities, the damage bonus from the debuff isn't helping as much, meaning you may just be better off using a regular weapon. However, it is not significantly impactful towards your gameplay experience. You can still continue to use one or the other, and it's not going to have a very huge effect. So now that we kind of know what Young Wolf's Howl is capable of, let's check out the other exotic swords because, well, we've never done that. Before we continue, I'm just going to tell you guys not to worry about Bolt Caster at all. It does considerably less damage than Raze Lighter and Dark Drinker to the point that it's not even worth mentioning. Raze Lighter was always considered the de facto best sword in the game because of its high damage and quick animation. It does great single target damage to anything that you need to kill. Let's test it out on Axis. My Raze Lighter is set up in the same way that most players use theirs. You got bonus ammo on the first option and damage on the second option. This test did not include memory of Radagast. Without weapons of light, Raze Lighter hits three times per swing for 6,382 damage, a total of 19,146. Against Axis, if you happen to hit his leg, it'll deal an extra little bit of damage, about 2,000. In this test, I dealt 290,517 damage, with 11 of the 14 swings hitting his leg for that extra little damage without weapons of light. From the first frame of the animation in the first swing to the last little bit of animation in the last swing, it takes about 18.5 seconds with 68 sword ammo to dump all of your ammo. I realized that I had to stun Axis in this clip though, which took away from some potential damage time, although I was still able to swing all of my sword ammo. Let's bust out the Dark Drinker now without weapons of light. Dark Drinker has a bit of a different animation. It takes a little bit longer to do, or at least it feels like it takes a little bit longer to do. So let's see how that impacts our damage. In this test, I dealt 397,632 damage in 14 swings. Well, almost 14 swings. One of them got cut off halfway through the swing at the end. Each swing ticks eight times for 3,648 damage, giving us 29,184 damage per spin or per swing. That times 14 is 408,576 though, but if we subtract 397,600 blah blah blah, from that we get 10,944, and if we divide by 3, we get 3,648, which means 3 ticks of damage were immune off of that final spin. All of this damage was dealt in 20.6 seconds. So with a time investment of two additional seconds, the Dark Drinker could provide up to over 100,000 more damage than the Raze Lighter on Axis. Both weapons were 384 attack light level. In order for Raze Lighter to match Dark Drinker on Axis, you would need another six swings of Raze Lighter, taking about another eight seconds to do. Six swings means you must equip the Memory of Radagast artifact and you must have a heavy ammo bonus on a piece of armor. Not having the ammo bonus means you can only hold 88 ammo, which is 18 swings. Something that I didn't realize until I did this test was that while the animation for Dark Drinker feels like it takes longer to execute, it has incredibly quick recovery time, meaning you can transition into another spin nearly instantly after doing a spin attack. With Raze Lighter, the recovery time is a little bit longer, so swings themselves are faster, but you end up having to wait a few frames before you're able to swing again. A risk that you run with the Raze Lighter is just straight up missing Axis. If you try to go for his leg for the extra 2,000 damage, sometimes your character will just straight up miss him altogether, which is about 20,000 damage lost. It's better to just try to go for his body, but try to square up to him towards his leg so that you have a better chance of hitting it. The more square you are to the boss, the better your chance to hit. However, you don't run this risk nearly as much with Dark Drinker. 
So if we want to tie all of this together, Dark Drinker versus Sleeper Simulant, Dark Drinker without Weapons of Light deals more total damage than Sleeper Simulant with Weapons of Light by about 20,000 in about the same amount of time. I can get off all of my Sleeper Shots and I can dump all of my Dark Drinker ammo before Axis teleports away to his main platform. If we include Weapons of Light on Dark Drinker and we get all 14 spins off, which we can, that gives us a total potential of 551,488 damage, which is 175,000 more than Sleeper Simulant. This number further increases when we add one or two Shadow Shots to the mix. The logistics of doing something like Mass Dark Drinkers isn't really too complex either. As long as you have two Defender Titans, you can plant one bubble in the middle area for the three people with cannons, and then when Axis teleports to his final location, you can have the remaining three non-cannon players all stack up in the bubble that would be planted next to the boss. The bubble, assuming everyone is able to get all of their spins, would be contributing about 450 to 500,000 extra damage to the sword users alone, which is about 4% of the boss's total health. However, a risk you run with this is that those three sword users would have to use something other than heavy for the final burn on Axis, which, if you're not prepared, can mess up your day. Outside of the raid, doesn't really matter what you use. Strike bosses aren't really too sword-friendly in general. In fact, one of the only sword-friendly strike bosses is Alakul, which is a dude with a giant axe, which is a little weird, that doesn't really make sense. Otherwise, you're not really going to be able to get too close with a sword on any bosses. On trash mobs, I think I still kind of like the raise lighter, mainly because sometimes when you go for an AoE attack on a bunch of stuff with a dark drinker, sometimes you just kind of don't go the way that you want, and you might end up just not hitting everything. Granted, this can happen with the raise lighter too, but it feels slightly more problematic with the dark drinker. But regardless of which one you choose, you're going to immediately annihilate any target that you hit with the sword. Anyway, that is your breakdown of the exotic swords. If you enjoyed this video, a positive rating would be greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.